Welcome back. Uh, we're going to make some attempt to code Stockfish without support for neural networks in order to support uh, our latest issue, which is that um, Stockfish is not building on variantfishtest.org. Um, if you don't believe me that that's a site, you can go over here and see, like, here's the site. Um, and let's see, can I remove the word tests? Does this still resolve? Yes. So I should actually update my issue here um, to provide a link to said site. Uh, and this doesn't need the port number either. There we go. So we can just click on the link. This takes us directly to variantfishtest.org which redirects us to port 6543, which is handled by Waitress and God knows what all other else Python code and framework, but um, it's all open source. You can peruse it at your convenience. <laughs> of course, when, uh, okay, when I go to do that, I broke it somehow, but um, no, it's a real site. Does it work without the port number? I thought so. Apparently not. All right. Uh, that'll show me for doing things live. So yeah, let's put the port number back in here. Apparently, um, things don't redirect the way I expected there. But yeah, here's the site. And so recently I had submitted an erroneous request or I had asked, could you run this little change I'm making versus my master branch? And I had completely forgotten that um, although the official Stockfish build, uh, they have changed their build server architecture a bit to support all this new neural network stuff. Um, there are other engines that and other build servers that don't have the same architecture, so I can't make these assumptions about use NNUE and being able to run a benchmark using the neural network and stuff like that. So I need to have a way to build this without support for neural networks. Um, so we're going to see just how far I can get with this in one sitting. So we can look throughout the code. There's references to NNUE. The, you would think that that would mean neural network and then two more words, but you have to read this backwards. It's the effectively updatable neural network. That's what it stands for. So, um, yeah, I don't know how they came up with it other than like putting NN at the start makes it easier to remember. And there are a lot of neural network terms that end with NN already, and everybody forgets those. So making it start with NN is kind of clever. Um, effectively updatable probably is not the easiest to remember thing. So yeah, like if they tried to market it better, they probably would have used other letters, but this is okay. Um, so yeah, this... Uh, use NNUE is, I forget if there's references to it in evaluate.h. Like, obviously the data structure is right here. Uh, use NNUE. So it's defined here and all the references necessary for uh, compilation are there. But you can decide at runtime whether or not to actually use it. Um, so, well, this is curious too. Like, what the fuck is this doing in a header file? I don't get it. Like, why is that not in a make file or something? Or config file or something? Like, I get that you might want to recompile some things when this value changes. And if you put it in some other config file or header file, well, not. If you put it in some other header file, you'd be fine. If you put it in some other config file or make file or something like that, 
you might forget to rebuild. Um, but this shouldn't be changing every... I don't know. This definition shouldn't be constantly in flux, so... Yeah, that's kind of weird to me that this is defined here. Um, so, we have this structure. Huh. I thought position... No, I'm sorry, this is evaluate.h. There is a position.h. It contains a lot of stuff. This evaluate.h does not contain as much stuff. So I'm going to add... Um, a preprocessor directive or a compile flag somewhere in here. Yeah, so where is CXX flags initially defined? So by default, we want this to compile with neural network support, but I want a way to be able to disable that. Um, now there's another parameter, extra CXX flags. So this is, okay, I see. Depending on what target you select, you get these extra flags. So I'm not so sure that I want to change, like, Maybe I do want to change this. No, here we got all the compiler specific flags and linker specific flags and architecture stuff. I don't want to touch that part of the make file at all. Um, but down here, I'm sorry, git restore make file, make clean. Um, so down here, where I've got all the variants defined, I think this is also where I want to specify um, use the neural network stuff. So I should, I want to be able to enable and disable this flag for neural network specific compilation. Um, that why is commenting this, like, leave it in blue? Oh, I see, this puts the entire line in this light blue, whereas right now just the variable declaration is in blue. Um, yeah, so I'm going to comment that, and then go into uh, evaluate the h. Uh, use NNUE. So there's no getter here and evaluate that H for use NNUE. Wait, we have another struct that has the same variable in a different namespace? Delightful. Whatever for. But. Yeah, this variable gets examined all over the place in this file. So I'm going to start by doing the crazy thing. Um, and that crazy thing is I'm going to comment out, in a sense. Um, I'm going to put an if def here and an end if here. So every data structure, etc., pertaining to NNUE is only going to be enabled if that uh, directive is present. Um, this is kind of unwise because I need this boolean. Like this, most of this file is not going to compile without that boolean. Let's put the boolean outside the block for now. Yeah, let's let's put it how it is and just. Um, attempt to build. Wait, did my build script do a checkout? It did a checkout. Let's not do the checkout. Let's also not do this checkout. 
I don't know why I confuse myself like that, but get status, get status, get diff make file. Okay, good. I don't I forgot to check if there is a make clean anywhere in there. But okay, yeah, evaluate.cpp does not compile. Um my build script still has extra steps in it that I don't need executing right now. There we go. So we only have one build step. Um, yeah, it's with the right architecture, etc. Um, that's fine. We're never going to get to the verify step there where it actually runs the benchmark because this fails first. And this identifies where I go next. Um, So apparently I've got to navigate to main.cpp line 48. Um, I mean, alternatively, I could try to cook some neural network support into Fairy Stockfish and just recommend that like every engine built in variant stockfish.org could use this neural network. That's probably a bit of a stretch, especially because we've not verified that this is compatible with older compilers. So, yeah, since we're making use of other people's um, machines and materials, we need to make an effort to support whatever they're going to offer us. Okay. Uh, wow. Init and then UE. So, yeah, I don't need this. Are there things in this eval namespace that are not neural network related? I mean, there's the namespace definition itself. Jeez. Okay. <sighs> well. comment out namespace NNUE through the end of the namespace. We're still going to leave the trace namespace present, but I don't think this is going to compile. So 1908 makes a reference to use NNUE. Um, this is where I was saying that like having this parameter is going to get a bit sticky. So if I don't feel like rewriting tons of code, um, probably the simplest way I can handle disabling NNUE is to have off to have and to offer this flag, but always set it to false. and just comment out the rest of the data structures that might require a newer compiler. Um, all right, so NNUE evaluate on 1911. Um, here. Oh, interesting. Uh, hang on. There's a simpler solution, isn't there? Um, yeah, the simplest possible solution I should have tried first. Uh, so the simplest solution is I go to wherever the assignment for use N and UE is performed. This is done with the space. Yeah. Yeah. So use NNUE equals is assigned here. Um, how about we only do that um, under this circumstance? In fact, I don't even need to perform an assignment in the false case. 
Um, but let's just do it for readability's sake. Whoops. Grep use and a not referenced in a header file. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, my other thought of removing the parameter altogether. I probably should do it, just so I don't confuse myself. Like, it'd be weird to offer an option, use NNUE, and then for it to do nothing. Uh, so let's only offer that and only use it in the circumstance where um, where I'm compiling with NNUE support. Am I forgetting anything else? Oh, I'm forgetting that here I'm parsing this use NNUE. Um, oh, interesting. I just commented out the parser. Okay. So this should compile and run. And test. Yeah, there's an unused variable at line 50. Uh, so let's go to line 50 here. Um, How is it determined that this variable is unused, but the others weren't? I think that's just a warning that, like, was there before I started changing anything. Yeah, I didn't induce that warning. That's some other developer's bug that this const variable is unused. Huh. Weird. So yeah, my tests should tolerate the presence of that extra parameter, which is not required. Um, so if this compiles and tests successfully, then also um, I could go into my make file and enable the NNUE flag and recompile everything and make sure we have a successful test there too. Okay, signature failed at line 14. So this fails because type equals string or combo failed. Um, okay, that doesn't really tell me how this failed. Run bench all. Our backtrace is this, and this backtrace indicates Not a whole lot. Um, evaluate that CP line one two one. Oh, eval file. So verify it anyway. Where is this? What consumes that? Because I'm about to comment this function out. Um. Well, let's. Uh, let's encase this. Let's 
like that. Um, because we don't need the verification step if we're building without neural network support. So, all right, the linker failed, and this should point me to search.cpp is attempting to consume this. Um, oops. So here we're going to put our if def and end if. And search.cpp should no longer compile because I've uh, added this directive that only compile with this function if this compiler flag is set. If this environment variable use NNUE is, or NNUE is set. Um, so yeah, search.cpp no longer compiles because we no longer have a verify NNUE in namespace eval. Um, waiting for unfinished jobs. That's fine, but um, 374. So now we're going to hit the other point in this code base that calls that verify step, wherever that is. If there is such an other place. Yeah, okay. UCI. Um, and you know, I did install Bloop the other day at Thibaut's recommendation, because he's trying it out too, but that actually... Even though the server says it's language agnostic, I've not tried it yet with Leeches. And once I have success with that with Leeches, maybe I'll try that with uh, Stockfish as well. Because I've looked at it, um, like I've got the whole environment set up, I'm just not super familiar with how to operate with it. But allegedly, as you make changes in your editor, rebuilds should happen on the fly. Which would be great because, well, I have a pretty complicated build script here, which I don't know if I could reproduce that in Bloop or not. Um, but yeah, Bloop looks kind of interesting. Okay, yes, you can. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. So this is just taking a second to build. All right. <laughs> Okay, so there's my proof of concept down the drain. Um, yeah, I forgot that if you change the eval function, you're going to get a different result when you go to evaluate positions. And that different result, yeah, it's not going to allow you to do reproducible builds. Hmm. I might have to ask the official Stockfish team, like, is there any chance at all that when you're doing these builds and putting bench numbers into your commits, for the sanity of people who don't want to rely on this neural network stuff, would it be possible to also include a benchmark without the neural network? as long as the, in addition to the normal benchmark. I don't know that they're gonna agree to that because like that's extra work for everyone. So yeah, possibly the easier route for me to go is one of two things. Um, one, enhancing fish cooking to detect whether it's building with an engine that has this use NNUE parameter. Um, or two, to enhance the fairy stockfish to use neural networks, which seems even harder. Um, geez, that's not great. So, 
The only reason I wanted to offer this um, well, what do I do? That number is supposed to exist to help with reproducible builds. Well, hang on. When I submit a test, I actually provide that number. I don't have to read that out of the commit history. So when I submit a test, I could generate the number and whether or not it matches the number that's in the commit history is a different matter. And that's going to be a pain, but um, that's okay. So yeah, when I execute this version of Stockfish and ask for the parameter list, it has no longer uh, the neural network parameter list, etc. Um, so this addresses points one and two. Uh, well, hang on. Can I do go uh, stockfish bench all? Does this crash? This shouldn't. Let's verify it completes. Um, that completes. Then point number three, compilation requires more recent versions. This we could figure out. Um, and if it comes down to it, I can keep adding more and more pipelines to Travis to try more builds, but I don't think this is the major concern. I think the major concern was distribution of the neural network doesn't work with the current variant fish test framework. And so rather than trying to support all of that at once, uh, it would be valuable to have a version of this that does not require the network. Um, so even though it wasn't an object of mine to like do away with the neural network stuff, that's kind of what it's come down to. Um, all right, is there anything else I can touch while I'm in here that would make sense to touch? Um, like this default name all these evaluate things. We don't need those. Uh, we also... Uh, we don't require the init step. We don't require any of this. Alright, so how many things did I just break? Evaluate that CPP. We'll go to line 97 here. So if load eval, etc. So none of this is required either. Um, <laughs> okay. Jeez. What a function. So this function is only needed in the event that there's some neural network related stuff to load. Um, how many files do I want to touch with this change, I wonder? Well, there's no need to call init any new e if there's no data structures to initialize. Oh, the hardest part is going to be there's this flag everywhere. Oh, no, the flag is always set to false. In fact, this is the point of calling the init function is to set that flag to false. So, yeah, I don't need to touch this file because init and then you can, you can still have a meaning despite choosing not to use neural networks. Uh, There we go. So that's one function we still want to have defined, even if it's not going to do anything super useful. Although, a function that just sets a variable to false is kind of weird. We might clean that up a bit. Let's first verify the rest of this compiles. 
evaluate. All right, so value v is equal to this, otherwise it's equal to something else. Um, so if neural networks are defined, this is the way we're going to assign v. Otherwise, just unconditionally assign it. And don't worry about compiling the rest of this expression. Yuck. But yeah, this seems like the only way to insulate this code. Um, classical, and we're using NNUE. Wow. Okay. Well, this is complicated, but we're not using any UE, so I don't need to worry about this com what this complexity entails. All right. Um, oh, and this variable is no longer used. Classical. Um, okay, so no longer need to define that. 1985. No member named evaluate in this. Do I simply mean evaluate? Pretty sure that's what I meant. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're finding gems all over the place here of stuff that we don't require. Uh, okay, evaluate.cpp, the header there has some unused variables. Let's jump to 50. So, yikes. Uh, what's the appropriate way to handle this? Macro to embed the default NNUE file. Uh, don't need that. Is there a namespace NNUE? Did I leave the namespace in place? Yes, because I need the init function, at least for now. Wait, no, I commented out this namespace. This namespace is no longer defined. So... myself there. All right, unused variable at 20 or 240. I don't suppose that this code still compiles with those things constant. Well, this said unused variable. My concern was that there might be an assignment elsewhere to this variable that's now effectively commented out, but I don't see such an assignment anywhere. Also, do I need that NAUE function anymore if nothing's consuming it? I could try commenting out its declaration as well as its uh, definition and see how much code still compiles. Um, Yeah, because I think I commented out the part of the evaluate code that accesses that as well as prints its value. So the flag use NNUE should... Why is it not... Why did I not get a use NNUE as undefined? Or uh, unused variable? I guess it's because it's not const, and I'm doing assignments to it. 
Um, yeah, so let's vim evaluate dot h. So here, let's only define, ex oh, this is extern bool. That's why there's not a multiple definition warning. Okay. Um, right, there we go. Let's try this and then go over to value.cp. And not need to define any of this either. Okay, well, we don't need the x turn for sure, but um, yeah, also this function shouldn't need to be defined at all, since the only thing I'm performing in this function is an assignment to false. So a easier way to do that, easier way to handle this code is just never to call it. Um, Um, yeah, let's try that. Where would this eval file loaded even be accessed from? Oh, the commented out definition down there. And then there's this verify NNUE, which is adjacent. Okay. Let's see, have I broken everything by commenting out more code? I know this is like a lot of rapid coding, but also it's really low level stuff, so it doesn't make any sense. Uh, probably to me, even. Like, this neural network stuff has been in development in Stockfish, or official Stockfish, for at least three months, maybe six. Um, and so, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of commits by the official Stockfish devs. There's been terrific excitement about um, the engine improving. But, uh, oh, right. Uh, but one thing that is missing, one thing that's missing there um, is just a a walkthrough of how all this stuff's uh, an architecture diagram uh, or explanation of some sort. Uh, whoa. Is this really used all over the... Oh, right. Yeah, this flag is used all over the place. So, apparently, for my own sanity, I would prefer to keep this flag around, even if it's always set to false. Um... Yeah, so let's leave that be. Um, status git restore main.cpp. All right. Um, well, actually, so if I'm leaving main.cpp as is, then I need to have a definition of init and an UE. Um, and that definition is just going to set the variable to null or to false. Um, uh, so yeah. There we go. And so we need to Right, so this is not going to be defined either. We're going to copy this directive to within the function scope. And yeah, that's going to be that. Because, yeah, I don't think I can like do this assignment with a variable that's or a parameter that's undefined. So uh, yeah, get add start at h start at cp. 
git checkout b no and then ue. All right. Um, status. Let's try build. Evaluate that's p an unterminated conditional. Ah, okay. Let's try that again. Yeah, so it would have behooved me to have a bloop build going. I should experiment more with that with Leech S first. Because uh, troubleshooting that while I'm troubleshooting technical stuff with Stockfish is not great. Um, but yeah, apparently my build here is functional. Um, now we're going to see in a minute that my test is going to fail with the wrong benchmark number again. That can't really be helped. Um, it is in some way comforting to know that I can disable the neural network part of this if I have to. So perhaps if this helps us get a WebAssembly build or build with other compilers or something going, um, these directives might simplify that. But I also have to look at how much code am I changing and is this going to be maintainable over time? Or is this, am I just making a mess that I'm going to have to undo later? All right. Um, Status. So yeah, we need to add this. Um, get diff cached. So what's changed? The benchmark is no longer going to do this in place back for this use and an UE parameter. We're no longer going to attempt to uh, embed the neural network into the binary. Some neural network definitions in that evaluate header file don't need to be defined anymore. Um, yeah, the actual evaluation code does not need to conditionally perform things based on this NNUE threshold 1 and 2, but instead can just use the traditional evaluate function. Um, you know, likewise, when we print out uh, the evaluate function, we don't need to um, I'm sorry, when we print out the evaluation of a position, we don't need to print out this NNUE evaluation as well. Um, yeah, we don't need to keep track of loading that. Verify NNUE is not required either. Okay, see so yeah, how this looks manageable. I don't expect these lines of code to change too much. The one I expect to change the most is probably the most nebulous of all these parameters. So like all these things have well-defined isolated purposes, but uh, threshold one, like this stuff is probably not that, this one. And then UE threshold one and two are probably prone to change over time, but I don't expect that like this will be changing to have like 10 parameters or five parameters and just constantly changing the number of parameters or otherwise changing like where these parameters are located like i expect these will stay where they're at so even if these lines cause all kinds of merge conflict headaches um i don't think it's going to be enough to force me to remove these preprocessor uh directives so status. Um, so you might notice that I've changed one other file here, which is our make file. And right now I have that commented out, dnnue. So let's make clean. Um, and now attempt to compile things with neural networking enabled. All right. So yeah, nothing builds. <laughs> Great, right? Um, 
So from position.h, evaluate.h, line 46. OK. Um, now I did a make clean before, or just a minute ago. Um, so I don't know exactly what's up. Like, wouldn't make clean. Expected identifier or left brace on 46. I mean, this is a namespace, right? What's the deal? Yeah, I don't have all kinds of metadata lying around. Um, oh, so this is with NNUE embedding off. I should also compile this without that flag. Um, so let's try it the most complex build first. So let's allow embedding again. And then if the embedding, okay, that make no difference at all. Um, 46. Why is there a compile error? So I have an if def and an end if, an if def and an end if. Is there a problem with nesting a define between an if def and an end if? I don't think so. NNUE architectures up a layer. What? Expand it from here. Oh! Okay, my parameter name is stupid. Wow. Okay. So that's my problem. Um, don't reuse a namespace as a parameter name. Well, use NNUE is not the greatest thing. Like, what the heck do I call this? Um, I didn't really have a brilliant idea for this, what to name this going into this stream. Um, but yeah, this, at least that's a unique designator. Um, it's not great. Rep if def and Where have I done this? And we're going to take a look at these files using vim. if def nnue is going to be now if def use nnue I'm just going to do this replacement everywhere so I need to come up with a better name for that but I'm trying to avoid colliding with names like namespaces that are already defined. So yeah, use NNUE, all caps, one word, um, is unique.
but it's not accurately describing what we're doing. Which is trying to retain backward compatibility without the NNUE support. So I don't know what we call that. Where we just are going to choose not to support that architecture. Uh, a large page support for NNUE weights. Yeah, great. So what is this potentially looking like coming down the pipe? How much of a mess is this going to make for me? Um, misc.cpp. So I'm not going to... Okay, and there's like the evaluate NUE, but this is not going to restructure most of our header or source files that are in the main directory, right? Uh, transposition table. So we're going to change a transposition table alignment and a cache size. Um, not sure how I feel about that. I probably should have an opinion, but. I don't know what to think. But at least lots of code is not changing. But it is concerning to me that we have an assumed cache line size and we can't know what the actual cache line size is because that's probably different for variants. So that's going to break variants whether or not I have this extra code in place. Um, Well, yeah, previously I had a thing called like use longest PV. And it was great when it was still there, but it gave, got to be too much of a mess to maintain. Um, so yeah, use NNUE is probably a fine designator. Um, it's status. All right. Um, so, again, back to the issue description. Wait, didn't I have this here a second ago? Not there. Here we go. Temp compatibility. So what we're attempting to do is not seg fault, etc. Um, so, yeah, I guess this is going to be... Uh, our commit message. Um, with variant fish test. Um, so git commit amend. Uh, so this is going to be fix number 582. Do I usually put this like there or like here or something? Yeah. Um, so I'm not totally sure what to call or how to... Wait, so this commit that's coming down the pipe indicates some other issues, doesn't it? So, yeah, there's our main directory with source in it. But there's this entire NNUE folder with extra stuff that we don't need. Um, how do I comment that out of the build Cause if we're not using it? I'm not sure. Um, Conditionally define use NNUE. Well, anger. That's probably even a better description. Um, yeah. Conditionally define and uh, uh, parameter use NNUE. Uh, and eval file. Let's 
so in an effort to retain backward well the whole backstory is in 582 anyway um, so that explains why we're doing it um, so up a level there's a directory I'm sorry we're in the source directory what directories do we have here? NNUE. Um, some makefile has references to it. Um, deploy sh is not part of what's committed. Okay, so makefile itself. Oh, I'm sorry, there it is, in position.h. Um, so, use NNUE. Uh, next file. So we're going to conditionally include this. should still compile. None of those functions should be in use. But also I might have to modify the make file. How about we make clean? Um, let's see where... It, oh, here it is. Shit. This is like way up here. Uh, are these the... How many references do we have this directory? Jeez. Alright, so... Ha. 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 Apparently, I want to define... Yeah, this is not ideal at all. Hmm. <laughs> so Okay, so we're always adding to CXX flags. We're never doing a assignment. We're always doing an addition. In a way, that's kind of a relief. Um, now, how do I check? Well, no, I have ways of checking if this list of parameters contains a value. Um, so this is checking if if this parameter list is not okay um, else and if uh, so instead of defining if not equals wait yeah if equals else and if And grab that, and then figure out which half of this needs to have what in it. So, so this says if this filtering of CXX flags does not contain use an NUA. Use any use undefined here. Don't include the neural network files anymore. Otherwise, include them. All right, that's probably fine. Um, I'm going to comment this out. Um,
Now, are there other references to use or the NNUA folder here? Yeah, there's another reference. VPath. Zizigi NNUA NNUA features. Um, so we do want Zizigi. Hang on. Oh, okay, so instead of, in here we don't use the pound sign or octothorpe. We just say if, else, and if. This is our structure without any special punctuation at the start. So if, else, and if. Um, so we're going to assign this a different value. If use and in is false. We still require ZZG, but we don't require NNUE or NNUE features. Um, let's see, what else? Object clean. I can probably leave that be. It's okay to remove things that we're not using. Um... Yeah, I think that'll be okay. So we'd already executed the make clean. Uh, let's do another build. All right, no member call named in union namespace eval. Uh, 68, oh. Oh, um, well, <laughs> I might have to extract my stuff back out of dirty piece for this to work. Yuck. Because last I checked, this dirty piece does this directly reference the neural network code in any way? It's a, no, it doesn't. Um, so I can continue utilizing the data structure for my atomic bitboard stuff, even though I'm not doing anything um, dirty piece related for standard chess. Okay, so no member named accumulator in state info. Uh, CPP 1505. Uh, if def use an NUE. Uh, and if. Where else is this? 1506, 2119. Okay, so this can go. Such a wild ride that our code base is going through. For me to comment this out, um, and if this becomes too much of a mess, maybe we find some other way to do it. Oh right, no need to do anything with this accumulator. Since the accumulator is undefined. Theoretically, it should be possible to override the architecture. Um, if necessary to support really old compilers. Since I am commenting out more and more of the neural network related code. Um, get status and position.cpp get diff cache. So, yep, none of that accumulator stuff. Nice. 
Um, make file. So, by default, we're going to have this parameter enabled. And therefore, this still needs to build with all those extra directives in place. It should be okay. Ah! And then I need to verify the build with an NUE embedding uh, off as well. So with all the neural network code in place, but just without embedding the neural network into the executable, as we're doing right now. We see I have DX NNUE embedding off. What that does is the X in there causes the rest of this to be unparsable. So it's not recognized as NUE embedding off, and so therefore um, it's going to build a binary that contains the neural network. And apparently that's our default distribution behavior. Okay, um, undefined reference to NNUE evaluate. I did a make clean, right? Why would this be undefined? Pretty sure I did a make clean before any of that. Um, but okay, since just to confuse things, let's do a build that doesn't try to embed, and then we'll try to do a build that does try to embed next. Yeah, that warning has been there. I didn't introduce that particular warning. I don't know why we're doing an assignment to a variable that's never referenced, but that's not something I broke. So I see here there's a tweet by Robert Reich. He says, the President of the United States is encouraging violence. Let that sink in. What sink is he talking about? No. I'm saying that somewhat humorously. Because um, I have to find some humor in some things somehow. Um, but yeah, no, it's... It's not the first time that remarks have been made like that. And it's not the first party to make remarks like that either. Alright, so yeah, let that sink in. Something that's been said on many occasions, and I think they mean let that sink in. It's just more funny to parse it the way I do. Um. So yeah, somehow I busted it all. Wait, did I get things backwards in this make file? So here I'm suggesting if use NNUE is not found in CXX flags, then our sources are these. Otherwise, our sources are those. Um... Is there... okay, so... was there any attempt to compile the NNUE sources? I'm not sure. But this is suggesting if use NNUE is not found in there. Um, maybe I got that wrong. Maybe this 
Yeah, so I'm sorry, I need the leading D at the beginning of that. Uh, for this to be found, this needs to be DU's and then UE. The same way this is D crazy and this is D crazy. Um, wait, wait, wait. So I need to use the same expression down here as well. Try this once more. So this time building a binary that contains the neural network. And then if this builds successfully, we'll build a binary without the neural network. And then if that's successful, then we're going to try the build without those files and see how that goes. By those files, I mean here we are in the source directory. Under source, there's a folder called NNUE that has like an NNUE accumulator and various other neural network operations. The same way that we have a Zizigy folder that has all the endgame code in it um, for table base uh, decoding. So we have a set of files that parse um, neural networks, or at least load them into whatever abstractions are performing uh, these neural network operations. All right, so yeah, now we have the half KP CPP and evaluate NUE CPP compiling. So there should no longer be a missing function definition. All right, good. We had a successful build. We look LSL stockfish. We have a 10.4 megabyte build. Um, so we're going to make clean. Now we're going to go back to build here. Oh, this was building with NNUE embedding off. So now I'm going to put an extra character in there. We're going to see a build that's more than 10.4 megabytes because it contains the neural network because NNUE embedding off is disabled. It's terrible to have flags that are called disable this and disable that because then you end up introducing ways to disable the disabler. And then maybe you have a way to disable the disabling of the disabler and like no, you want to have flags that are, have a positive attitude about the world that help you understand what you're doing. But I didn't design it, so I'm just rolling with it, and it is what it is, and uh, it's good enough. So yeah, I, again, I wish I had a better animated display while my hardware spends forever compiling this. It was funny when I had my bot, I'm sorry, when I had a bot attempting to play Geometry Dash, it would just input random keystrokes all day. And you'd watch this cube just jump its way across the screen. Um, and people got all excited about all the learning that was taking place, except there wasn't any learning. And I felt horrible about it, and I had to uh, stop it. But yeah, maybe someday we'll reintroduce those experiments too, with other AIs and neural networks and stuff, because those are beautiful. Uh, it just didn't stand uh, scrutiny. Okay. Yeah, actually, this is fine. Let's add the make file as it is. So again, to clarify, we introduced this D use NNUE 
um, flag, environment variable, preprocessor directive, whatever, we introduce this thing. And it defines what source code we compile, it defines our V path for what features to include in our build. And that's that. Separately, there is already a flag for disabling embedding the neural network into your code directly. Um, so that is such a weird name, but that's fine. It at least allows me to deploy to my cloud instance quickly because I already have uploaded the neural network and the binary is being updated more frequently than network is. So the third test here is if I go into the make file and here mangle this, this use NNUE, if I disable this this way or if I like change this to DX use NNUE, if I like mangle this somehow and I've done a make clean, uh, nope. I've done this, does this still build? This will compile. The test will fail because the benchmark changes because we're not using the neural network, which I might have to raise to the official Stockfish team because they're probably not interested in my patch, but they might be sympathetic to my cause anyway of wanting compatibility with as many machines as possible. Probably not, but we'll see. Likely they just encourage me to enhance Fairy Stockfish and whatever other engines we intend to continue testing on variant fish test. Um, and just add the neural network capability to those engines as well. But I'm not in the best position to do that right now because only half of my variants actually support this um, extra feature. So we can take a look at my benchmark. Um, so like, here's a list. Standard chess supports both using and not using the neural network. Anti-chess does not support it. Atomic does not support it. Crazy House does not support it. Extinction does, Grid Chess does, Horde does not because of the 32-piece limit. Yeah, some of these are much harder to support. Uh, I forget why Anti-Chess does not support it. I think it has something to do with king promotions and representing a king, and maybe it might support it soon. Atomic, I'm confused. I think with just the way I'm placing and removing pieces from the board... I tried to support this uh, neural network concept and just got too messy. Crazy House, you need to keep track of which pieces which in hand by index of the position at which they were in the original position. That's not happening. But yeah, so anti-chest might be feasible. Atomic might be feasible. Um, Horde just, as I said, runs over the 32-piece limit. Uh, King of the Hill does. Loser's Chess does, Racing King supports it, uh, Three Check supports it, uh, Two Kings does not because, well, I don't know. Maybe I could make that support it somehow, but there's some concept that you only want to use the first 30 pieces in the neural network and somehow the kings themselves are not represented, so it's probably not even worth supporting if we have a number of kings that is not fixed at one. So yeah, like if I could get this neural network working or compatible with Atomic, um, maybe I could make a case that like this is a way to go for variants. So I need to take a closer look at the piece addition and removal code. There have been some changes on the neural network code in official Stockfish lately. Um...
Where was this done? Where did this recently change? There have been a lot of changes to stockfish in recent weeks. Um, oh, I think if I, if I look at... Well, I can't look at the revision history of a file here, can I? I can view... Yeah, no, I should be able to look at this and examine this file's history. Small trivial cleanups, add NNUE evaluation. This couldn't be it. No, this is when the all the code got added. Lots and lots of code. Small trivial... Oh, here it is. Remove eval list. I don't so much care about that code, but the comment here. This monolith of an essay. That actually explains things pretty well. So, there was a need for some pretty complex data structures to keep track of things somehow. Um, for purposes of castling and for purposes of uh, rotating the board as is what or as was done for shogi now there's a concept of uh, instead of representing the pos the opposite of the position is not the rotation of it but the vertical flip of it because we're talking about chess where king side castling and queen side castling are different so rotating the board does not produce an identical image, whereas flipping it would. So like if you flip a position, um, the evaluation should remain the same from the perspective of the side to move. Um, because king side castling is a different move than queen side castling is. So this code simplifies a lot of code that was added earlier, or rather this patch simplifies the earlier patch. And I don't really follow all this. There's too much to follow, but somehow this works and it works great. And I should be happy. Maybe one way I could get this working for Horde Chess would be to only evaluate um, pieces belonging to the army that is not the side that has all the pawns but just the normal pieces maybe that'd be a way to get this working for horde and just not worry at all about the other pieces that could be interesting but yeah i don't understand this code very well at all other than this simplifies stuff that was added. Actually, it says this closes issue 3068. So remove eval list. This, as I understand, this patch, this fix to the original patch does not make it more difficult to change the network architecture in the future. So we don't need the overhead of an eval list. I don't know what other architectural considerations they're making or may make in the future. I'm sorry, not sure what they're considering now or may consider in the future in terms of making future changes, but still. Um, yeah, removal of this extra layer of complexity called an eval list um, has simplified or has resulted in the speed of of code and there's been a lot of discussion about this and I don't completely understand it but yeah this eval list data structure I had attempted to interact with and make my atomic code handle better but maybe I don't need that to be handled anymore maybe if I just change that from classical to mixed it might just work get diff make file is going to show yeah, so here's me with the mangled make file. Here I've built a stockfish. If I issue UCI, we see that eval list, I'm sorry, that eval file and use NNUE are not parameters in that listing. 
Um, and if we check out the size of the Stockfish binary, instead of 10.4 megabytes, it's 10 megabytes. So it's a lighter binary, doesn't have any of the neural network stuff in it. Um, so get restore make file status. All right. Um, get push. So the next question is, is there a way I can parameterize the make file uh, to suggest that if a parameter is supplied, we're going to compile one way, otherwise we'll compile the other. Um, how do I parse a parameter that's provided? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. Um, it's been forever. So yeah, if arch is blank, do the following, etc. So, oh wait, here's a list of all the parameters. Um, so I could presumably introduce a parameter to the make file um, and handle it kind of like some of these other flags are handled, I guess. Um, so yeah, instead of defining this here, um, hang on, so... So if use NNUE is blank, we're going to add this flag. Um, hang on. What's the best way to introduce a flag for enabling or disabling a thing? Uh, Okay, so this is the standard format uh, for this thing. Use NNUE. Yuck. I don't like that. Um, am I really going to introduce... I guess I am introducing this. NNUE, yes. We're going to use NNUE. But... I want that to be the default behavior. Okay, so there are cases of, yeah, checking if the value is equal to no. So we're going to say if this is not equal to no, then we're going to use it. So might as well document it, although this is like not the greatest thing ever. Um, all right, so NNUE equals yes, no. These are space characters. Uh, D use NNUE. Um, use effectively up. Updatable neural network. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's how to parameterize this. So instead of having to mangle the make file, we can now specify in our build script whether or not this is going to be supported. Um, well. This sucks because I'm stuck making a decision here. 
So I've introduced this parameter. Um, I guess the default behavior for backward compatibility is that I have to supply yes, or sorry, I have to supply no by default if I want this to focus on backward compatibility. I, I don't know, but I want that. Um, So am I going to enable this feature by default like Upstream does, or am I going to disable it by default in an effort to make it easy to support with... I think this is... introducing this parameter is reasonable. Changing the default behavior with respect to Upstream is probably not reasonable. But how is the variant fish test server? Um, it is, how is this thing uh, going to detect that we're dealing with my, um, my fork? I can supply test options here. So maybe I introduce a way of specifying, set this parameter to false. I don't know, because either way there's going to be a pain to someone. The majority of users are going to want this feature that gains dozens, possibly hundreds of ELO, but our build server isn't going to support it by default because not every engine built by the build server, or I'm sorry, our fish test, fish cooking server here is not going to support um, sending this uh, using this neural network because we don't know what architectures it's supported on because uh, that's just constantly in flux. Yeah, I think this is about as far as I can go with maintaining backward compatibility. Uh, get diff cached. So, whoops, <laughs> I put use in all caps. That's great. Where did I do that? Yeah, this should be just like that. Um, so, if this parameter is not set to no, then we are going to use it, which is different than all the other feature flags, but for a good reason. Um, now, while I'm in here, uh, there's some things that upstream stockfish developers have done which are special. Um, so we can see, like, recently they made an enhancement um, to conditionally embed, I'm sorry, to embed the default neural network. And they introduced this NNUE embedding off parameter that if you want to compile in a way that doesn't embed by default, just do this. I expect someday they'll convert that into a makefile flag and maybe even make that flag the name of the file you wish to embed, but that's not where it is at the moment. So I don't want to touch that as much as it does make me cringe a little bit, um, but only a little. So yeah, do we have any notifications? Not yet. Do how's our build doing? If 
I take a look here. Uh, use NNUE as it's going to compile here. Uh, it's compiling uh, Travis, and that takes a really long time because there are a lot of tests to run. Um, it commit amend reset author etc. Now to test out my changes. Um, so here we set all these other parameters, and somewhere I have like debug equals yes. So if I say nnue equals no, um, we can test it that way. And we can test the default behavior, which is to have this enabled. Um, so that should be a good test. Hang on. I'm going to confuse myself if I have too many tests going at once here. So we're going to make clean, check out our feature branch isn't master. It's use and use hyphen NMUE. All right. Um, so we're going to test all four permutations of this, even though that's overkill. This permutation one is do not include the neural network headers or source and um, just incidentally set disable the embedding off of the neural network. Permutation 2 is going to be enable the embedding off of the neural network into the binary. It's just going to produce the same result. At least it should despite my lack of familiarity with the code, but um, I'm not seeing how, like, oh yeah, I commented out the embedding off stuff, so um, it doesn't matter what value I pass in for that parameter. All right, so stockfish bench all, we'll see, oh, shit. This doesn't work. <laughs> uh, how did I break it? How is it this broken? Um, okay. I mean, yes, this is the most this is the most likely combination of parameters to break, but ah, uh, sixteen one three default perfed. Let's just check to a depth of three. Does the move generator work? Yes. All right. Undo null move. Not checkers. Well, don't know why that's busted. Not super happy about that. Um, okay, at a depth of one it works. At a depth of two we fail. Um, that's not great. So meanwhile, um, what have I changed here? I've just parameterized this and then UE. Um, that's the only difference between what's running in Travis at the moment and what I'm running locally. Oh. Um. Yeah, my documentation's not great. So here I called it use underscore NNUE. 
And up here, I defined it as use and then UA. Um, where is this? Okay, so yeah, apparently by default, we the convention already established before I start making things is that you put underscores between names. So... Yeah, we should do that here. Um, whoops. All right, let's take a look at these files. Did I redefine? No, I just only redefined these uh, preprocessor things. Um, let's do the same exercise for the CPP files. Uh, how many files do we have to touch? Not that many. If if I were in a habit of having to do this quite often, I would actually get better at said. But um, since I'm not having to do this sort of text find replace all the time, I'm not super experienced at said. Um, all right, so now this is going to... Well, we have... And then you embedding off. Yeah, this already had underscores in it. So now we... Where's the use NNUE? I don't see that here anywhere. That's got to be in this uh, CXX flags list. Wait, no, it's not. Because we're testing if I'm compiling without the neural network support. So, how far is this going to get before it fails? Also, yeah, this verifies, what I, this verifies what I said earlier about supporting C++17. Or maybe even requiring C++17. I'm not sure that everybody on our variant fish test cluster supports C++17, so that's probably another obstacle. Um... But yeah, my patch does not work. Um, and I don't know what to do about that. Wait, where is use underscore NNUE in this list? There's use p threads. Again, I keep confusing myself because, yeah. This couldn't possibly be that make net failed, could it? Oh, this is running bench for signature failed on line 14. And even if it were that make net failed, this is also failing. So, I did a make clean. I'm always doing make clean between builds. Why would this suddenly fail?
have no idea. I mean, I could take a look at the failing code and see if, like, there's something obvious. Um, but probably better is to enable some of the self-diagnostic code here. Um, also, while we're at it, let's comment out that part of the script so there's fewer steps in a build. Okay. Position is okay, state failed. Uh, two, seven, five, three. Size of state info. Okay, what's going on in state info? Here's the state info declaration. Here we're not using the accumulator anymore. Um, is there a problem with dirty piece not getting set as needed? Uh, what could it be? I mean, we're not using the neural network accumulator, but um, what are all the pieces of code that we're skipping over? Oh. Mem copy, the new state, otherwise this. We still need this mem copy operation. Um, wow, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> this is disgusting, but um, the cleanest way to salvage this code. is to ensure that mem copy gets executed even if none of the rest of this does. So whoever developed that upstream entangled the two concepts in order to save some cycles on a mem copy operation in the case where sharing an accumulator was acceptable. Um, but yeah, there's no need to worry about sharing an accumulator if we don't need an accumulator. Um, is there other strangeness that's similar like that? No, just the one. Okay, that could be worse. Um, yeah. Now, am I still preserving this use NNUE flag? Yes, I am. Um, geez. All right. Do I need to preserve this use NNUE flag? Because if we're not using it, I um, prefer not to have to worry about this. Hey, so um, yeah, let's, let's simplify my life a bit here. So now we're going to skip the entire function definition. Um, like this, and since we're skipping the function definition, we don't need to have it defined either. Um, how much of this is being skipped? Okay, that much. So we're still keeping the namespace of eval. Why are we keeping this eval namespace? 
I don't know. We don't need it. Yes, let's do away with the eval namespace. There we go. And then go back here. So here we've defined namespace eval, namespace NNUE. We don't need any of that at all. We don't need this init function. Uh, add start at CP, start at H. Make clean build. This is not going to compile. I know at least one reference that is going to fail. Uh, I didn't know about that one. Oh, namespace eval. Yeah, that's where I'd rather end this. Wait, what? I am commenting out the entirety of evaluate H. Huh. Didn't see that coming. Wait, no, I need the eval namespace. I need these first two functions. But the rest of this I don't require. We still need trace and evaluate. Um, so now there's going to be a compile error because trace and evaluate. Well, I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's the compile error I expected. Um, so yeah, I need this expression. And do one of those. Where is my include or add? Yeah. So I've already pushed my changes to the cloud. They're already compiling for the most part. But if I were to pull request, if I were to merge to master what's already in the cloud, I'd not be happy with that because it's hard to maintain. This might be hard to maintain for different reasons, but maybe I can be happy with it anyway. Uh, we don't need this. Because there's some elegance to doing here. That at least we're ending up with a slimmer binary that like theoretically maybe compiles better. Um, maybe somehow this uh, has fewer dependencies and therefore doesn't require the huge all the architecture constraints that the neural network imposes when it's part of the build. So I don't think that the official Stockfish team would want my contribution at all. Um, it would be a mess for them to maintain. They don't want the mess. But um, all right, UCI options CPP. At 45. Oh, um, yeah, that makes sense. And likely, if I were to submit this, they might restructure some of their changes into more modular, um, ways of representing their code. Um, like right now, their changes are scattered across quite a few different files and potentially could be difficult to maintain over time. If they wanted to accept my changes, they probably have to restructure at least some small part of what they did. Um, although they did well to like create the NNUE directory and keep the very complex architectural stuff out of the position class for the most part. There are some things that got intertwined, but um, 
they did well to mostly separate it. Yeah, and the only reason they're adding this complexity of the neural network is because it actually makes the engine quite a bit stronger. Well, so it looks like we didn't get an immediate test failure. We still have a signature mismatch, but the test completed. So I can consider that a win. Um, Test number two, remove the X here. Again, the value of that flag and then UE embedding off should not matter for purposes of what I'm doing right now. Because the code that references it, or whatever it is, whatever macros evaluate to try to bind the neural network into the binary. Um, those should not be executed since I think what those like five lines of code or macros that reference other macros that somehow embed stuff um, all that I think is encapsulated by my use NNUE um, macro. Or not macro, but my if def, if we have the neural network uh, enabled. The greatest part of this is going to be when upstream they decide to do something similar and I have to merge all that in with all the stuff that I've done. But I don't think they're going to do that. And even if they do, I can probably remove my change, add their change, and it'll probably work the same way. All right, so the test completed again. But again, got a different result. Again, that's fine. Um, but yeah, the larger point is that here we're building an engine that does not require uh, the use of neural networks. So we look at the parameters that it accepts, and the parameters it accepts do not include the neural network related parameters. That's branch number one. Branch number two is going to be if I mangle this make file, um, to disable their use by default, that's going to be special. Actually, yeah, so like I mentioned, I was going to do two other tests, but those can actually be run in the cloud by Travis. So we'll see in this build history. Now I've queued up another build. So all the stuff that uses the neural networks, it's going to run anyway. So here we are disabling neural networks by default. Our build script again will execute a clean, <laughs> it'll check out a branch. Let's not do that. Well, let's check out this branch. Um, 
Yeah, I think this should be okay. And I don't need to specify this parameter at all. That's the whole point, is that by default this retains backward compatibility. Um, uh, fix is actually a bad word for this, because this doesn't completely <laughs> fix the issue. Changes will be required on the, uh, the variant fish test server side to provide this additional NNUE equals no. Because I'm not going to do this by default. test compilers with n v equals no by default. Uh, do I have a number to affix to this? The, my issue number is 582. So yeah, this with by default stuff is more than we need to express here. Um, regression test compilers if NNUE equals no. Uh, that's good enough. Let status get push. Um, before we push, so there's our build script, so we check out this branch. That branch includes a test. Uh, the test is going to fail. <laughs> well, no, what we're going to extract this time is that although there will be a test failure, we'll get the actual bench number to plug into the test to run on the server. So that test and this is the signature I'm talking about. Um, so instead of doing a normal test, we'll just do I don't know, a thousand games or something, a hundred games. Not sure how many games we need to run to make sure this works. Um, a time control of 10 seconds per game. Yeah, I guess a thousand is probably fine. This is just to verify that this runs at all. To deal with the concerns that were raised which were specifically um, use N and UE as problematic, bench fails, uh, or by default uses mixed mode. Again, I'm not going to be able to change the upstream bench numbers. We can just compute them and then manually input them into this here form. Uh, compilation requires more recent compiler versions. That's what we're testing is do people have compilers that support um, this new all the other stuff here okay so here's the number we obtained boop boop actually <laughs> here we go git commit amend uh, bench. There we go. Obviously, that's not a long-term strategy. It's not sustainable. But um, we can rerun our test. See that our reference bench is now that number. 
and see whether or not we obtain the number. Do we have a reproducible build? We should. And if so, we push the code and then submit the test. In fact, this is a better commit message um, than the one I previously came up with, so let's adjust the commit message accordingly. Also, I don't really care so much about C++17, um, but yeah, let's test compiler compatibility. I think part of the reason I have this C++17 is because I'm building with parameters um, which say I need to do a modern build. If I removed the modern aspect of this, would this still be a C++17 build? I'm not sure if I can easily grasp that from my make file. Uh, we'll check. So, okay, by default we do C17. Um, but yeah, there's no guarantee. Well, there's no way to override these. Like, this flag is produced all the time. Um, git blame make file C17. That's what we want to grep for. Um, so, this was introduced. Uh, August 5th, so this month. Um, so yeah, we are very much testing C++17 compiler compatibility. Uh, git log, git commit amend, number 582. Git log, git diff head minus one indicates here's the one line I changed. Uh, yeah, so we did obtain this bench, uh, this 8101 number, which I've supplied in both fields here. Git push my branch to my repo on GitHub. So that's pushed. So, yeah, let's do thousand games and see um, just how that does. So this comments out all the neural networking code. This does still require use of C17 because that's what the neural well that's what this commit introduced. This commit being this one. which is add NNUE evaluation. So this particular commit introduced all the neural network stuff, which changed the make file, git diff. Um, if we take a look at this with respect to the make file, um, I don't know, we figure some, oh, we've upgraded from C++11 to C++17. That's what's happened. So, I've taken the most roundabout solution for checking are we compatible with this. Uh, if not, <laughs> I don't know if long term I can support G uh, the C11 with our cluster because all our machines are donated. So, what this might come to is that I might be forced to test offline here 
like not on the cluster for all my future multivariant stockfish stuff until such time that the donated machines could be upgraded, which could be a long time. So um, that's the problem with donations is that like it's all voluntary. Um, I submitted a test uh, which does not revert uh, the compiler requirement, but does, uh, let's see, revert the NNU, but does revert other NNU changes. All right. So that's about as good as that can get, unfortunately. Wow. Well, that was a session, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, I might be forced to do my testing offline. And if so, if I'm forced to do so, I might still accept my patch here not the most recent one but this thing i might accept this because this is probably easiest to feed into cute chess if i compile without all the neural network stuff then i don't have to reprogram cute chess to disable the neural networks if the engine is stockfish so that's another fun aspect of this as that like, if I can't accept my own patch for some reason, then I'm going to have to enhance cute chess and other things that interface with Stockfish um, to somehow disable the use of neural networks. And I get that, like, this gains so much strength in the engine that they want to have this enabled by default. So yeah, backward compatibility is not their top priority. Their top priority is encouraging use of this thing that otherwise Stockfish is going to fade into obscurity without. Because other neural network engines are on the rise too. So once there are enough of these engines um, using networks and stuff like that, then tools that interface with engines will have to accommodate. But we're not there yet either. So I'm making some attempt to provide backward compatibility, but um, yeah, it's going to be a long road. Uh, but my piece of this puzzle is much simpler than that of the developers who had to introduce the stuff in the first place, so I can't gripe too much. Um, and if I complain, they're not going to hear my complaint, because like, they don't want stockfish to fade into obscurity they want to support compilers that like they don't have a strong desire to support a c plus plus 11 compiler maybe 14 but not 11. i wonder what it is that required them to move from 14 to 17 but they've made the choice and they none of us really want to support i say that but then again like I'm dealing with volunteers submitting things to this variant fish test cluster, so like some of them might still be using C14. Maybe I do want to support it. Even if it's gonna be a huge headache. I don't know. Uh Tom Scott was right that like systems degrade over time. Um I mean who's got a basic compiler these days? There are free open source basic compilers, but setting up all these libraries on each machine just in case you might want to compile something with an older compiler one day it's a lot of work for the systems around the world and so like as a cost saving measure um yeah sometimes they don't want to set up every compiler for everyone or sometimes you don't want to 
download this open source compilers that are available or other freeware that's available just because it's not worth your time. So this is like how legacy software and legacy systems and such become harder to maintain over time. So they're just tons of dependencies and little flags like this that change all over the place. To me, it makes sense that we want to embrace the latest stable standard um, while not shooing away too many developers. So this is probably a nice compromise, even though I think there's a C++20 standard. They're releasing these every few years, but there's no pressing reason to jump to 20 right now. There is an official Stockfish test cluster. I forget what the name of it is. Fish cooking. I remember. Fish cooking stockfish. Yeah, so there is a cluster out there. You can install a worker on your machine. I forget where you can view all the test results. Here's stockfish 11 download. I mean, this is all pretty great. Uh, they have a forum for discussion. So. Yeah, now I've just mostly been following on GitHub, just after the fact, after they've decided on what's worth doing, I keep track of what they changed and I merge it into my branch. It's like here we have update parameters and classical evaluation. So they have some constants that they tuned, and so we see like that's where this is defined. And if I go here, I say, if I go to my repo, we're going to find a update parameters in classical evaluation uh, right over here. So yeah, they make a change, I accept it. They make a change, I accept it. And I just keep merging in their changes into, or their patches into my repo. Um, and whenever I have to like add some code, remove some code, whatever, to accept the spirit of what they're doing, into my oddly formatted repo. Um, I do sometimes have to make changes to accommodate. Um, oh wow, what's this? So are you saying X, this modern thing is no longer a thing? When did I miss that? Um, cleaner make help. Is this what removed? Oh, this is what removed this definition of x86 64 modern. So, huh? How is my local build working at all without that line here? Oh, because I'm explicitly stating that I want this architecture. Okay. I see. The selected architecture will enable the following configuration. So there's some section here, help build sanity. Um, so if you don't specify an architecture, um, this selects x86-64 modern by default and help skip sanity equals yes. What? Huh? If supported arch help skip sanity, true. Supported arch. I think what this is going to say is that x86-64 modern yes is a member of supported arch. Um, the selected architecture will enable the following configuration. I don't completely grasp this. Do not print details if arch is an empty string. Okay. I'm actually curious. So if arch is an empty string, we use the modern build by default. Is this so? So I unwittingly merged that into my fork. Um, my CI pipeline didn't throw up on it. Um, 
didn't choke because of this change. Um, so let's say, let's check out master by default and do a clean. Um, and instead of specifying our architecture, well, no, we do specify this. But hypothetically, if I did not, if I said that I'm just going to use the modern build architecture instead of BMI2, this should still build, right? And not give me a sanity warning, but just go ahead and build it. Um, interesting. Does this... There's no parameter in this listing that says... Well, we're not using BMI2, we're using modern. So I guess that's um, SSC 4.1, etc. Like, I assume these flags toward the end have to do with, like, pop count as a modern build instruction. So this is not the most modern. I'm sorry, this is a modern build, but this is not, like, my BMI2 compatible instruction set. Now, I'm forgetting, I have not closely followed whether BMI2 offers advantages over modern anymore. Like, is that something that eventually... What's the BMI2 instruction set? Bit manipulation. So, I guess architectures by default do not support this more advanced form of bit manipulation. I'm assuming there's like vectorized instructions in here in this set or something. Um, sure would be nice if this file... Wait, can I view the file and then view its history? Perhaps. See all the changes they made recently. Let's embed this simplify using non-default nets, check the arch variable, what for? To prevent user errors or generating untesting, untested code, check explicitly that the arch is equivalent to a supported architecture listed in make help. To nevertheless compile for an untested target, the user can override the internal variable uh, passing supported arch equals true. Oh, nice. Now that's not to suggest, like, if you say C++11, well, that's not an architecture. But, yeah, if somehow this were compiled with an older C++ standard, that might not work. But if you have an esoteric um, machine or a cross-compilation that's going on, you could still... Uh, test it somehow by passing parameters instead of changing the make file. So that's pretty clever. So yeah, that allows them to submit tests on their cluster without having to change the make file every time they submit one. Um, which is good. Um, yeah, they've made a lot of changes to this ever since they upgraded to C++ 17. They found all these other architectures that are not supported, and they found some new architectures they want to support. So, uh, like providing vectorized neural network for SSE 2 and MMX targets, sure. Uh, where SSE 2 flagged compiler info? Where is this output? Oh, okay, I see. The compiler info gets dumped into um, the stockfish. Well, there's a command to print out author and compiler information and such. Um, okay, but yeah, this should, yeah, this does still build and test fine even if I don't specify that I want to use the bitmask instruction operation set. Um, nice. It's good when things work by default, isn't it? Um, See, so yeah, I've also introduced this NNUE embedding off 
into my deploy script, which copies um, Stockfish onto my build server up in the cloud, that relay chess. Um, but nice. So yeah, we'll see in a matter of time uh, just how broken some of my changes are. Um, I am somewhat amused that, like, here... I'm sorry, where? Yeah, there I provided the bench number. So theoretically, this build should succeed. Uh, Ampfeyer succeeded. Travis should succeed. Um, and if all that goes swimmingly, maybe... I'm not sure if they'll afford resources to try to compile my code using uh, C++17, but they might try this. Um, oh, well, yeah, comparing this branch to itself is not so exciting, but um, yeah, so this includes this change to, by default, disable use of neural networks unless explicitly asked for. Um, but yeah, there's also the parent change about conditionally defining all this stuff for neural networks. So I think this is a good faith effort. If it sucked, at least um, this is a point from which we can just start a broader discussion about what do we want to do. But maybe it's fine. And maybe this is even a good thing, like if we're considering Android and other builds and maybe there's some esoteric phone architecture and we need to downgrade to like some older C++ or some proprietary C++ version, maybe this will somehow work. Time will tell. Yeah, it's an interesting point from which to start discussions at any rate. Uh, so I tuned that parameter uh, on leeches for my bot so it can spend more time per move. Um, so let's see, how's it doing on time management? 37 seconds at the end of this game. Has it lost a game on time today ever since I changed uh, the overhead value? I mean, I'm sure it's lost some games, but has it clock flagged? Seven hours ago. So this was before I changed my value. And this did flag at the very end, but um, it had 13 seconds at the time it flagged. So I'm thinking this is a communication issue and not a time management issue. So I'm going to allow the engine a little bit more time to think per move, and hopefully this can result in, um, well, hang on. I was going to navigate to another page and I lost it. Uh, hopefully this can produce better insights and we can understand whether or not I've regressed or progressed as a result of all the neural network changes. Because I think around the time I made, um, around the time that I merged in the neural network changes, I had to change some of the time management code too, because I was having timeouts on the server around the same time, which is, that's a bit troubling, but um, yeah, we're going to see whether the average cent upon loss against similar strength opponents, uh, let's just say blitz chess, we're going to see whether or not this blue line goes down um, against similar strength opponents. Is it playing more accurately or not? Um, maybe the color selection matters too. Yeah. So see if you can find a pattern, if you can figure out what's the power of the neural networks. This is the dashboard from which to do it. Um, so just go to player profile. And if that player has public leeches insights, you can mine this information and look for a weakness or something like that. All right. So yeah, time will tell how this goes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.